shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched. The prime suspect here features the true account of infamous murder and true crime stories from the Philippines. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence in all sorts. Listener's discretion is advised. A large suitcase was found floating near North Harbor, Tondo, Manila on August 16, 2007. After retrieving the suitcase, the witnesses opened the case that would later shock the entire country. They found the decomposing body of a young girl stuffed inside the bag. The authorities went through a rigorous challenge to positively identify the body as seven-year-old Geraldine Palma. She was reportedly abducted on August 11, 2007. Geraldine Palma, commonly known as Dindin, was last seen on the early afternoon of August 11 at her tutor's house, together with her nanny, Marites Ontog. Dindin's home was located within the same vicinity. Her father, Gary Palma, was scheduled to pick up his daughter at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. However, when he arrived at the tutor's house, his daughter and her nanny were nowhere to be found. A few moments later, he received a mysterious call from an unknown person demanding him 10 million pesos for Geraldine's release. After the call, he rushed to the subdivision security office and sought help for his missing daughter. According to the security guards, the suspects who abducted Dindin could still be inside the village, as they didn't notice anything strange passing by the guardhouse. Gary went around the village and asked the residents if they had seen Geraldine roaming around the streets. Unfortunately, there were no witnesses at the time, and the search inside the subdivision came to a dead end. This led to a decision for Gary to report his daughter's abduction to the police. However, before reporting it to the authorities, the kidnappers called him again and told him, Why did you go to the police? Do you want to die? The call terrified Gary and led him to think that someone might be spying on him while his daughter was under her captor's hands. As precious time passed, the perpetrators kept calling Gary and demanding him to quickly provide the 10 million pesos ransom. Much to Gary's displeasure, he doesn't know where to obtain such a large amount for his daughter's freedom. A few calls later from the abductors, he pleaded and managed to convince them to accept his 245,000 pesos offer. The abductors called again and instructed Gary to deliver the money in a secure place located in FDI Lower Bikutan, where he was made to believe that he would see Geraldine alive and well. Despite assuming that he could see his daughter once again, Gary still collaborated with the police. The authorities accompanied him en route to the supposed location of his daughter. After arriving at the meetup point, Gary and the officers waited for the kidnappers to contact him. 
after hours of waiting, there was still no sign from the captors, and the officers with Gary were becoming tired and restless, to which Gary asked them to leave if they were not interested in resolving his daughter's abduction. However, the policemen decided that the captors did not intend to show up and forced Gary to come home. The abductors never called Gary again. A few days later, two young boys saw a large suitcase floating near the shore of Isla Puting Bato in Tondo, Manila. They opened the bag and found a lifeless body of a young girl packed inside of it. The witnesses then called for help, and the authorities arrived to retrieve the discovery. According to the autopsy conducted by the Manila Police District, the victim was strangled to death. A black cord was found wrapped around her neck with bruises and marks in other parts of her body and significant signs that she was also raped. Nakita ko rin yung mga pictures at uh, talagang totally devastated yung frontal uh, vaginal entry. Eh. Wala na siyang hymen talaga. Rapture. Upon hearing the devastating news about the body of a young girl found inside the suitcase, the mother of Geraldine Palma went straight to where the body was brought to identify if the body belonged to her daughter. After arriving at the morgue, she was surprised to see another couple looking to identify the corpse. Meanwhile, the father of Dindin was still in denial at first when authorities found his missing daughter's body. The mother right there, I was in denial. When they came home, they came back to pay sir. Yung anak ko, kumuha ng picture sa cellphone niya. Ay, layo ito. May, may, that, that, anak ko, may bridge yan. Ito, walang bridge. Oh. Pisa na lahat eh. Sabi ko, malayo ito. And I saw the picture of the other girl. Eh, may team to eh. Mahabang mukha eh. Mas malayo ito. In a confusing turn of events, Julieta Salvatierra, the mother of Jessalyn, another missing girl, came forward to the police and claimed that the body found inside the large suitcase was her daughter. On August 2, 2007, Jessalyn was last seen by her mother after being picked up by her school service. At 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Jessalyn was expected to be home, but she did not show up. Her school service told Julieta that her daughter chose to ride the pedicab on her way home. Julieta got worried and went around her community to look for answers regarding her daughter's whereabouts. After being informed of the body of a young girl found inside the suitcase, Julieta and her husband, just like Geraldine Palma's mother, rushed to where the body was being held. Upon confirming the identity of the body, both claimed that the body was not Jessalyn. Alejandro Yankiling Jr., the lead investigator of the case, inquired with the Salvatierra family if they want to double-check the corpse of the young girl to further help with the investigation. However, the couple refused. Mga takatong doon na talagang na, nahihinaan sila ng loob na i-claim yan eh. eh siguro ay eh, magulang dahil uh, sa pagmamahal nila sa anak nila at uh, makita nilang gano'n ang sitwasyon at gano'n ang nangyari. Natatakot silang tanggapin na eh, yun ang nangyari sa anak nila. Hindi na at actually ako pa nga mismo pumunta sa bahay nila at, uh, para alokin silang tingnan uli. At, uh, hindi na sila, ay, ayaw na talaga nilang tingnan at uh, aminin na anak nila yan. Meanwhile, Gary Palma, Geraldine's father, 
suddenly came to his senses and also claimed that it was his daughter's body. Despite the ongoing investigation, Gary insisted the authorities, mainly the medical legal officers, to sign the death certificate and let their family mourn and bury their daughter. However, the police refused because they have yet to apply the necessary tests to confirm whether the body was indeed Geraldine Palmas. On August 26, 2007, 10 days after the shocking news that the body of a young girl was found inside a large suitcase, Gary Palma got what he wanted and was able to bury his daughter. However, the authorities still have not resolved the identity of the corpse and pursued a thorough investigation to both the Palma and Salvatierra families. Later on, the Manila Police District was able to identify that the height of the body found in the suitcase was 4 feet and 2 inches tall. Meanwhile, Geraldine Palma's size was only 3 feet and 10 inches, while Jesseline Salvatierra was at 4 feet and 4 inches. The findings led authorities to believe that the height of Jessalyn was more accurate to the body rather than Geraldine. Furthermore, the investigators also believed that Jessalyn's facial features had more resemblance to the corpse that they found. similarity. Actually, if you will compare the photo of Jessalyn Salvatierra, makikita natin dun yung closer semblance eh. sa height sa mukha malayong malayo kay din din difference ng 4 inches eh. the investigators also compared the missing girl's crime scenes to where the large suitcase was found Geraldine Palma was last seen at Pasig City while Jessalyn Salvatierra was at Tondo Manila The bag containing the body of a young girl was found in Islang Puting Bato, also in Tondo, Manila, which is much closer to Jessalyn's home. The suspect in the disappearance of Jessalyn was also a pedicab driver in Tondo, which gives authorities probability that the corpse found in the suitcase was indeed Jessalyn. Because of these findings, the National Bureau of Investigation as well as the permission of the Palma family, exhumed the young girl's body that was recently buried on September 24, 2007, to initiate further examinations to find out who it really was. After exhuming the body, investigators faced a hurdle because the DNA samples from the corpse were degraded by formalin. They sought help from the Laboratory of the International Commission on Missing Persons, based in Sarajevo, Bosnia, through examining the remaining body tissues. The NBI conducted DNA testing and collected samples from members of the Palma family. Gary Palma was the first to submit his DNA, but later on, his specimen did not match with the corpse. However, his wife, Felma, matched the DNA from the corpse. Despite confirming that it was undoubtedly Geraldine's body, speculations erupted that it was the first time that Gary found out that he was not the biological father. But you'll notice, no? The paternity is not an issue in this case. What does my fatherhood to Dindin have to do with who the killers are. But you see, this is more entertaining. Meanwhile, the Salvatierra family was not pleased with the investigation as they were not asked 
for their DNA samples to be compared with the corpse. Instead, the family remains positive that their daughter Jessalyn could still be alive. Now that the body has been identified as Geraldine Palma, the investigators focused on her nanny, Marites Ontog, who was also missing as the only link to Dindin's abduction. Later on, a pedicab driver named Ronald Tala came forward to the authorities. He told them that two men carrying a large suitcase hired him to drop them off at Isla Puting Bato, where the bag containing Geraldine Palma's body was found earlier. The investigators found out that the two men were Rafi Nepa and Joey Egos. A few days later, the authorities also arrested Ramil Diorreco. Ramil confessed to his participation in the crime. However, he claimed that he was only utilized as a watcher and did not engage in the killing and rape of Geraldine Palma. Furthermore, he also pointed out other suspects, Ricardo Bohol and Henry Tesado, whom were all quickly detained by the authorities. Ramil Diorecos live in partner. Norberta Legado also helped the police. She told them that on the evening of August 13, 2007, she was looking for a meal to get ready for supper. Suddenly, she saw her live-in partner, together with the suspects, raping a young girl, and later on, strangle the helpless kid with a black electrical cord to death. However, Gary Palma did not believe the witness, citing some inconsistencies with her story. Anya, mahirap daw paniwalaan na tatlong araw ng patay ang kanyang anak bago natagpuan ang maletang palutang-lutang sa pampang ng isla puting bato. Dapat daw kasi ay hindi na lumabas sa mga binti nito pagkabukas ng maleta dahil na rin sa tagal ng pagkakababa dito sa tubig at maaring nanigas na rin ito. Oh, isa pa, in-interview ko yung witness. Siyempre, I talk to the witness. So I talked to the witness, the girl, Beth. So the girl, Beth, uh, kailan mo na witness yung rape? Hindi ko yung rape. Siya nag-apid-apid, pirma eh. Monday night. Monday night. Sa loob-loob ko, Wednesday na, na discover ang body, Medyo, medyo sariwa pa. It's not three days old. Beth, baka nakamili kayo, baka Tuesday night. Tinuturo ko na eh. Baka Tuesday night, para mas credible tayo. Despite the Palma family's doubt, the authorities filed charges of rape with homicide and kidnapping to the ten suspects, wherein five of them were state witnesses. While the other five perpetrators were in police custody, the authorities have arrested Rafi Nepa in an anti-crime drive at Isla Puting Bato in June of 2012. Rafi was first arrested in 2007 after a witness saw him carrying a suitcase similar to the one a body of a young girl was found before the crime was discovered. Unfortunately, the Manila Prosecutor's Office ordered Rafi Nepa to be released for lack of evidence. The Human Rights Commission also recommended the release after Rafi Nepa was allegedly tortured by arresting officers to admit to the crime in 2007. Four men, Henry Tesado, Joey Egos, Renato Bohol, and Ramil Diorreco, were tried for rape with homicide for the Palma case. Egos and Bohol 
were also charged with kidnapping for ransom. Meanwhile, there have been no developments regarding the whereabouts of Marites Ontog, the nanny of Geraldine Palma, as well as Jessalyn Salvatierra, the other family's missing daughter, who was earlier claiming that the corpse found inside the suitcase was her. The nature of this crime as well as the confusion within the investigation, sparked public outrage on the lack of assertiveness of the police and the gruesome circumstances that seven-year-old Geraldine Palma went through. She was kidnapped, raped, killed, stuffed inside a suitcase, and dumped at a shoreline close to a slum area. Children should never experience such inhumane acts. To our Prime Suspect Patrons, thank you for supporting PH Murder Stories. We are very grateful for your contributions. A new episode will be posted every first Friday of the month. For more updates, please visit our website at phmurderstories.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, PH Murder Stories, and follow our social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at PH Murder Stories. <laughs>